This is lesson three, banking the unbanked. And in this lesson, we're going to be taking a look at Bitcoin's potential to provide formal financial services to the nations that are developing in the world and the citizens who are currently unbanked. Let's begin. Worldwide, some 2.5 billion people go without formal financial services. And in the Western world, where we do have these formal financial services, we generally take them for granted and we don't understand that there are billions of people around the world and in developing nations that have no access to this financial foundation that we have here in the Western world. Can Bitcoin provide a solution? It is possible given that many of these developing nations currently use mobile devices and electronic currencies to exchange value between themselves already. Now if you've ever heard of a leapfrog concept in technology, it describes a adoption where instead of going linearly and piece by piece with new every new piece of technology, leapfrogging would describe skipping a step in the technological cycle and going straight to the current high-tech paradigm. And an example of this is Africa. Instead of installing landline technologies for telecommunications, they went straight to cellular mobile devices. And it can be seen and an argument can be made that Africa may leapfrog traditional banking and move directly to a sort of cryptocurrency cyber currency paradigm. All that is required for this to happen is a mobile device with internet connectivity and when you're using Bitcoin that's your bank account and indeed many of these nations already use electronic currencies such as M-Pesa which is a service for cell phone airtime minutes and very much acts like a value exchange in many nations of Africa such as Kenya can Bitcoin take the place of these electronic currencies and pull these nations out of the dark and onto a more global economic level? It's very possible. Now many of these nations are already plagued by currency mismanagement and on behalf of their political leaders very questionable and corrupt moves are made that essentially lead to severe inflation and hyperinflation and keep the population in continual poverty. And Zimbabwe is one example of a country which had inflation reaching some 231 million percent in 2008. And indeed, today, it still suffers from this inflation of their currency. And they're just starting now to move directly to the US dollar as their main currency. With the young populations in Africa set to explode in demographics in the coming decades, it could be possible that these populations in these countries are more inclined to instead use a fully digital currency that's not under the control of their national economies and not under control of potentially mismanaged politics. This brings us to the conclusion of our lesson today and for a lab with this lesson, read our analysis into why Africa may leapfrog traditional banking. You can find this at diginomics.com slash Africa may leapfrog traditional banking. That's all for today. We'll see you in the next lesson.